In this presentation, we will set up a new salaried employee who will also be the owner of our S corporation. So our goal is going to be a few things with setting up this new owner, this new employee. One is to see the process of setting up a salaried employee as opposed to an hourly employee. Another is to set up an employee that will have a high income, which will result in hitting some of the caps, including the social security cap, so that we can see what the effect will be on the payroll when that happens and then to also set up the s corporation at the owner of an s corporation so we can look at some specific items that are related to that particular situation if we were the owner of the s corporation we typically then do have to set ourselves up as an employee pay payroll and there are some items that are specific to that situation for example the medical insurance related to the owner of an s corporation is an item that could be specific to that situation so even if we don't have an s corporation we will go through the process of setting up an employee on a salary rather than an hourly basis that will be applicable whether an s corporation or not and if we are an s corporation we'll talk about the item of the medical insurance specific to the s corporation within quickbooks online for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info here we are in our s corp paid payroll file we're going to go down to the workers tab on the left side we currently have our two workers we have anthony and we have beth we're going to now add a new worker we'll go to the add an employee button on the right side so it's on the bottom right side add an employee the name of our employee will be judy jones this is going to be the owner of our s corporation so we're setting up the salary related to judy jones who happens also to be the owner and we're not going to enter the email it's going to be optional information the date hire we're going to say is as of the end or the beginning of the year once again we're going to keep it on every month and we're going to be running it through january again so then we're going to say the hourly no we're going to now go to the salary so we have salary rather than the hourly we have a couple options on the side here to enter the data per year per month or per week the tradition is basically to keep it in there per year and then it'll subdivide it based on what we have in terms of how often we pay in other words when you say how much do you earn salary usually people say something per year and then we could subdivide it out into however often we pay with whether it be monthly weekly or semi-monthly and whatever the case may be so we're going to enter the 500,000 that's going to be the yearly pay it's going to be a high yearly pay because we want to be able to hit that social security cap and see what would happen within the first quarter so we can see what will be uh, the effects on that so note if you have the 500,000 and we took the 500,000 a year and divided it by 12 months the number of periods then of course we're going to see 41,666 on the pay per month if it happened to be that we were paying people uh twice a month then of course it would be the 500,000 divided by divided by 24 because that's going to be 12 months times 2 24 pay periods so that's what it would be paid if we pay every or twice a month which is different than paying every other week so that would be bi-weekly there's actually 26 pay periods or 52 divided by two so 52 divided by two 52 weeks in the year divided by two if we paid every other week is actually 26 not 24. so just be careful when you actually process the payroll it's going to be determined if you use the hourly uh, method that will have the whatever the annual is and then break it out by of course the time pay period that will be paid with now we may return to two and three in a bit but we're going to go first to the enter the w4 information just to get the general information within the w4 remember that the w4 like with a uh, salaried employee is what we would need to have filled out generally for an employee to get that data from to populate so whether it be salaried or hourly we would still typically have the w4 so we already have the name here of course judy jones we're going to give the social security number this of course is a mock social security number we're going to give the address this is a mock address and this is another house in beverly hills that's uh, for sale right now if you'd like to take a look at it and then we've got the marital status so it's going to be the marital status is going to be married on the w4 information and the total number of allowances we're going to say are three so we'll have that information that of course is needed 
for the federal income tax calculations. We're going to go down here to the California information as well. We're going to choose married one income and the allowances at three. So that's going to be the information we will have. There's not going to be any information down here. These are not common. So we're going to say it's not something that we will adjust and then done. Now we're back to this screen, which is the pay screen. So I'm going to scroll back down. Now we're going to go back to number three for the deductions. We're going to add a deduction. We'll add a 401k deduction. So I'm going to add this item. This would be typical of the owner of an S corporation. One of the major benefits is if, if you can have uh, a, a subtype of retirement plan, whether it be 401k or some other, that's one of the benefits of being self-employed oftentimes. So we'll select the drop down. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 401k for a, a small company. We're just going to choose the 401k as the default, uh, just to choose that option and see how basically retirement plans in general would work. So we're not going through all the policies of which retirement plan would be best for a small business or as corporation just looking at the general options for the retirement plan looking here at the 401k plan which we set up with prior employees so it's pretty much set up for us we got bank 401k that's where what's going to be appearing on the paycheck so now we have the employee deduction the amount that's going to be taken out of the employee check we're going to say 3500 out of the employee check and again this would be once something that the employer or that the employee who is also the, the employer, who is the owner of the S corporation, would then have to decide what's the cap, what's the max they can put in, and what do they have available given whatever policies that they have. This being a 401k would be different in any other kind of retirement plan to try to max out uh, the benefit of the 401k. Then hopefully we're going to go to the matching as well. We're going to say, okay, there's a matching amount. We're going to put in a dollar amount for the matching. So we're going to say the matching amount and we're just using a dollar amount this time as opposed to a percentage as we chose last time. And we're going to say 1750. So that's going to be the, the matching that we'll have on a dollar amount. And again, uh, note that these are just going to be arbitrary numbers here just to show the effect of the 401k plan on the check, which is a common thing for an S corporation, uh, the owner of an S corporation to want to have. So then we're going to say OK and keep that. The next item we're going to set up will be specific to the owner of an S corporation. What we've done thus far will be something that could apply to a salaried employee. Now we're going to go do something that would be specific possibly to the situation of an S corporation owner who were setting up their payroll. So we're going to go down to the second item now. We're going to go to number two. We're going to add an additional pay type. So it's not a deduction. It's going to be an additional pay type. And you'll note before that we came here to have the overtime pay, which isn't applicable now because we're a salaried employee. So typically we don't have the overtime pay. Uh, we're not going to have a sick pay option. Uh, later on, we'll talk about a bonus, which is another thing that's uh, common for a uh, owner. What we're going to do down here is go to the more options. And it says it's not common, but this is going to be one of those situations where we're the S corporation. And we're looking down here for the s corp uh, owner's health insurance so s corp owner's health insurance we're not going to go into all the details of how to deduct the health insurance but just note it's a common situation for an s corporation and it's a little bit tricky to think about how that s corporation is going to deal with and be able to maximize their benefits from the health insurance so research that how do you then apply it within quickbooks this is where you go to to apply it we're going to say that the amount will be recurring so we're going to say it'll be 2000 and once again look into the research if this is something applicable to you because you want to get the play right between the s corporation uh, information and what might be reported on the individual tax return so when you look at the situation for taxes consider what's going to happen when you report the s corporation information and what's going to what will happen when you report the uh, individual taxes the form 1040 so then we're going to go down here and say done and now we're back to this screen so we've got number one two three we've got everything we need there we've got number four the withholdings are good at the three we're going to have the paper paycheck as we've had in the past for our example problem we're going to scroll then back up top and take a look at the profile tab the second tab we have the address that looks good the email we're not going to include the email it's not required but it's something that you may want to do of course phone number contact information also 
something uh, that may not be required, but might be something you want. We're going to uh, put the gender, we'll say this, and we're going to say the birth date, we're going to say is 09-21, uh, and this is going to be, we'll say 1983. So that's going to be the date of birth. And then we're going to go down and have no more notes. You could put notes as well. We will then save this information. Now we're back to this screen. And note this is different than the screen. If we go into any of these editing, we'll get to the same place. So if I edit this information, then we'll go back to the familiar screen where we have the three tabs up top. If we go to the employment tab, the only one we haven't really looked at yet, then we've got the employee ID. We're going to keep that as is. Status is, of course, active. You have filled out a new hire report with the state. We're going to say, yeah. You have stored a complete I-9. If necessary, we're going to say, okay, yes, we, should, we have done that hire date. And that's what we want. The work location is the one we want, which is the only location we have. And everything looks good there. We're not going to be dealing with workers' comp in this example file, in this example problem. So we will then say, okay. Once that is set up, we should be back to this screen. I'm going to go back up top and now go to our employee list and review our three employees now. So we've got Judy, we've got Anthony, and we've got Beth. Judy's our new employee. You can see now 500000 per year as opposed to the twenty-five per hour. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.